Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is the Curious Images event. Uh, we've got a lot of talks packed in, and hopefully you can see from the uh, rundown, they're very tight together and range from pure art to computer science to anything in between. So it should be a very good day. I am just going to quickly talk about uh, one of the seeds of uh, the collections that people have been using, the what we've been calling Mechanical Curator Collection. Um, and I'll run through that very quickly because I think a lot of people may have already heard it. Uh, so what I'm going to do very briefly now, who has already heard me talk about the Mechanical Curator Collection? Please put your hand up. The more hands, the quicker I'll be. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, this, is, this event's being hosted by British Library Labs, which is a Mellon-funded project. Um, and we're there to help researchers work with the BL's data. We're not there to help digitize data, but we're there to help them use the already digital stuff. So I'm building bridges between researchers and data. I would love to build bridges like this, but most of our projects are a few months long, so the bridges are more like this. So the idea is we'll put a bridge down, a, a service, a way of putting data out there that people can then see the potential of taking further. And one of these ideas was to work with what we call the Microsoft Book Collection, which is a public domain set of data of uh, 19th century and earlier books that were digitized by Microsoft and given to us. Now, we could have built a massive website, and that, that's good, and there is this perfection about how we do this, but really, I'm putting this quote up because it illustrates that we're trying to do something small, something quick, something inspirational, hopefully, but probably not finished, because it could be perfect, but we can't wait. So this began, really, uh, with, a quote, with our, us trying to understand our collections better. Uh, so this idea of putting things out in the open started because we had a researcher come to us, Peter Francois, talking about travel in the 19th century in Europe. That's what he was interested in. And I think it's good to take a little time to think about what that means. Researchers ask about questions to their subject. They don't care about the books it comes from or the institutions that hold them. For all they care, it could occur in three different institutions. They want to know about their research topic. Uh, and so we were trying to work with him to better understand how to search not only our collection, but any collection, to answer this question rather than give me X book. Let me find this title that I know exists. He was asking about things that didn't exist, but he knew were probably in there. Which led to the sample generator, which is uh, something I use to try and illustrate the disparity between what we have digitized, this red line, and the things we actually hold, which is the blue line. So you might see that the lines are very different. Uh, so if you take the digital collection and just base your research on digital content, it's going to reflect what's in this tiny little slice rather than the blue, which is what we hope to be much more representative of the truth. So if you're working with the digital content and you're accepting that there is bias, how do you actually work with it? Because most services are geared up for you to go to a book and view a page, and maybe read a few things and flip a few pages. So it's still treating the object as if it's a single item. But what about if you're trying to look on 10,000 books? The result of a, gener a general search in the library catalog, if you search for travel, you'll get 60 odd thousand books. What happens if you want to work on all 60,000 at the same time? You need a different way in. So this was one of our uh, proxy questions, the questions we asked ourselves before researchers asked us, uh, how can you find out how depiction of faces have changed? Because you're not going to go to one book and look through a single book, you want to look through all books. And so the thing that went behind this was, how do we take the data we have, the digitized material, and present it in such a way on a hard drive that we can quickly get a researcher up to speed and how to work with it? And so the question was born, how, does, how do the faces change? Uh, many of you will have cameras, phones in your pockets that will have this software already on it, face detection. Some will even detect when you're smiling or not. Uh, so I ran it across the Microsoft book collection. Uh, it predominantly found female faces, as it is wont to, uh, because it's based on photographic images, and there are a variety of reasons which people in the room are probably far better than me to tell why female faces are better detected rather than bearded, glass-wearing, hat-wearing, oddly disfigured uh, caricatures are found. 
There was something else while I was doing this. I wrote a few things that would bring up some of these images on screen. A lot of them were false in that they would bring up an image and it would just be a landscape or a decoration. Uh, but people used to stop when I had these on the screen and go, oh, what's that from? And I'm going to point out this point. Microsoft Book Collection was seen as quite a boring set. It was travel, English literature. It wasn't that exciting from the book titles. However, the images were striking. And so I wrote a bit of code to dig around. And uh, it, it's slightly random. So what it does is it goes to a particular image in the collection. It will start with one. They will go and look for another one an hour later. And it will try to draw circles and try to draw lines on it and see if it can fit lines and circles onto it. It tries to work out the published date and also the publisher. And if it feels that the image is either visually or published in a similar fashion, it will go, oh, this is a new image, and publish that. And it's posting on Tumblr and on Twitter. And that seemed to be quite interesting. Lots of interesting images come up. And last Christmas, I used them for my Christmas tags. Um, so I pulled a number of images, placed them on tags, and people seemed to enjoy them. Uh, I also put it onto a blanket, because why not? Um, and we got to the point of Tumblr's great, but we have a million images. We need to talk about it. We need to allow people to comment on it and to use it in the research. Having a URL for everything so that people could actually discuss it was the key thing. But where could we put a million things? Well, it turns out Flickr is very cheap to put up a million things. And we were able to organize it and allow people to come in and tag. And there are a number of people in the room who have done fantastic work in helping us understand this mass of images where we knew the book they were from, but not what the image actually had in it. Um, and you'll hear more about that today. There was also Jonathan Jones who talked last year because, uh, I'm bringing this up because last year, so a year ago, this is the, almost the anniversary of our release. He said, this is great, but why isn't every public domain image freely available? And I'll leave that question out. I'm not going to try and answer it. A number of other people commented on it. Uh, it's been heavily used. We know that much. Uh, we'll have someone else talk very shortly about uh, ways we're trying to explore how to really see how it's being used. But we're having 20 million hits a month now. On average, uh, we've got 200 and well, it's more than that because I wrote this a couple of days ago, but uh, 215 million, something like that. Uh, over 150,000 tags, hundreds of contributors, uh, fantastic uh, extra work. So one I'm not sure is in the run-up. There's been a lot of changes, but uh, we did a map tagathon with James Heald, who's in the middle, should you wish to raise your hand so that people want to talk to you about the map tagathon, um, where big list of books, we suspected had images of maps in, and simple people power going through, going, is this a map? Tagging it with map, adding it to Wikipedia. And how many, how many maps are we up to now? 20, 25,000. 25,000. Um, uh, there have also been artistic outputs, uh, which we'll hear about more today. <coughs> this is from David Normal, who, uh, David Normal's work at Burning Man. You'll talk more about this later. Uh, but finally, this is the collection. It's up there. We're trying different ways of getting out to people, um, whether that is uh, through Flickr, the tag data, the book metadata is on Fixture, the book data itself is on GitHub. People can interact with them. We're trying to find out the best ways of getting to people. Um, so that's the Mechanical Curator Collection. And hopefully we'll see much more of the impact uh, today from it.